What up, fellow Rust players? It's your boy Defango here, and we got another banger for you today. Today, we're going to be talking about our automated sorting system, Tier 1. The first thing that you can basically get set up as soon as you got a Tier 1 workbench and the BPs unlocked, and I think it's probably one of the better systems, although maybe a lot of people aren't going to set it up because they think it's time-consuming or whatever. I'm here to show you that it's actually not as difficult as you think, and it can be implemented for pretty cheap and just about any base that you got going on over here. So I got a little bit of a mock-up. We're going to do a couple of loot rooms. You know, you, you got your TC room and then maybe another loot room and another loot room. And I've already set up some basic power over here so that we can at least get this started pretty easily. For the setup, you're basically going to want boxes, uh, however many boxes if you want. I think up to 29, 32, something like that is what you can get. I feel like you're not going to need this for the tier one of our sorting system and you'll understand more once we actually start getting set up. You're going to need some splitters, you're going to need some storage adapters, and then you're going to need one conveyor for every box that's going to be here. And I'll start to kind of break it down for you as why we're doing that. And as you'll notice that I actually can get one on my TC2, so... Um, you could actually use your TC in this system, although technically I like to save the TC for the tier two system. Outside of that, I'm just going to, you know, try to place these on the outside and then leave the other spots on these opened up for later if I want. And then for putting it in the loot rooms, if you'll notice, there's that square on the front right there. So I want to make sure that that square is facing to the inside whenever I'm placing my boxes because that'll allow me the maximum amount of connections to the system and you'll see that I just replicated it on each side pretty easily no big deal and then you know oh, I need to put myself uh, down you know a drop box to get this thing working there we go and then I'll just put down these other two boxes and you'll kind of get the picture as to what I'm trying to go for because it's really not as difficult as I think some people make it out to be. And it's super helpful in the beginning time. And then as you start expanding to more boxes, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get things done simply. And now we're basically kind of ready to go. We just need to get storage adapters onto the boxes. All right. We got storage adapters onto the boxes. Oh, looks like I need one more because I forgot to put one on that box. As you can see, it will be metal intensive. So you'll want to have your auto smelting system already set up and ready to go because later on you'll be able to implement that into this pretty easily. And I think you'll pretty much like it. So probably the most I maybe difficult part of this whole entire thing is going to be able to get this part down, which is our friend, the splitter. And now for every splitter, we can use two boxes because we're going to be daisy chaining these guys together. So I'm just going to kind of start here on the bottom and you'll see how we're going to set this up. So there's two boxes there, two boxes there, two boxes there, two boxes there. Now, we want one of these for each box. So you'll just push those guys down. That's why I set these loot rooms up kind of like this because it makes it a lot easier. That way you can still access the box without actually tipping off and messing with your filters on the conveyors. Although, I don't know if it's a huge problem for some people. It might be. But really, that's basically almost the hardest part of the setup after that, you just kind of got to decide which filters you're going to use for what box, and it's going to be different for everybody. We used to have a fancier system to make the output of this go a lot faster, but it seems that uh, Face Punch has removed our ability to do so, so we have to... We, we can just do it with the one. So, pretty simple. That adapter goes to this splitter, and then this splitter is going to get connected to this 
input and then this guy is going to get connected to the box and then we're going to take the other side run it up the wall go to the other one and again reconnect it now we're going to take this splitter and we're just going to connect it to the next one next to it pretty easy doesn't have to be in the way you're just going to basically follow this pattern all the way down and you'll understand why when we start setting up the filters because i know that a lot of people think that the filters are the gonna be the bane of their existence but really it ain't that difficult it's actually pretty easy face punch at least gave us some category filters that we can use for the tier one system that i think really just make this you know almost unbeatable and on modded servers your items can stack larger most of the time you're not even going to need any other space you'll just need these boxes and that's it on vanilla servers though when you have lots of stone and other stuff like that yeah like if you got a whole box of stone you're gonna want its own box for that probably so you know keep that in mind and then again we're gonna connect around uh, we got our last two boxes over here and there can be more if we want but you know same process applies and we're just always going to leave at least one open on the splitter so that we can add another one to the line. Now, once we got all that done, our last step would probably be to power these guys. You can use whatever power system that you want. You should probably already have at least something set up. And for me, I'm just trying to get this done really quickly. So I'm just going to go power in to have power out on electrical pass through. And I'm just going to daisy chain all of these together because it really doesn't require anything else. And then I'm, I personally don't ever turn this off to save power because, you know, I'm usually using it. Although some people might want to take it off or turn it off. That means you can just throw a switch on it and that'll work just fine. I personally just leave it on. But as you can see doesn't take too long to get all these guys connected and they're connected now the hardest part of everything is the categories now technically i think face punch gives you like 13 categories that you can utilize here but you don't really some of them you're never going to use so like technically here i'm going to say components go in this box and then i'm going to apply that turn it off and on this one, I'm going to say resources go into this box. And I'm going to turn it on. And you'll see, or you, you're, you're already starting to get the picture, you know. Here, I'm going to do weapons. Here, I'm going to do ammo. You know, I could put them both in the same box if I wanted to, right? Let's get those turned on. You know, I can do clothing, and this is going to encompass all your clothing and armor. And it'll be a box that just automatically sucks up all of that stuff. Here, we're going to do tools. But for me, I like to put the tools and the traps in the same box because, I don't know, I don't ever seem to fill them up. And then here's two more boxes over here. And we'll do construction equipment in one box. And then we'll do electrical in that same box. And then we can have our catch-all box at the end. And that one's going to have the fun stuff. And then there's also one for other. Right? And so you can see that, you know, like right now I have this set up kind of weird. You know, like if I want I, I forgot about some stuff. So I'm going to make the animal box. It's now going to be a food and medical box. Right? And then I'm going to delete ammo. Apply it. And then on the weapon box, I'm going to put ammo hit add apply and that's the basic system system all set up you don't really have to do anything else you won't have to mess with it other than maybe changing filters at some point in time if you need stuff and as you see if i go through here i can start giving myself some stuff all around and you'll see that it'll just start moving it so i'm just going to start giving myself stuff from each of the areas i mean i don't know if i can fit all that in my inventory but you know yeah, we just start putting it in 
and you'll start hearing it rolling almost immediately. Now, there's limitations, obviously, since you can't interconnect all the storage adapters anymore it's limited to the speed of how much it picks up and each conveyor can only pick up 12 things at a time so it will pick up stuff kind of relatively fast but you'll notice that it's still gonna only be able to pick up so many items at a time because there's a throughput on it but still beats having to do it all by yourself as you can see and the more that you're messing with it the better You'll do we got some resources over here we can grab right like you know it's pretty easy and it's important to show you this too is that if you got big stacks you know it's only going to take little bits of the stacks like if it's only one item it'll move that one item much quicker than it'll move some of the other stuff but obviously it's still going to take time to move that many X amount of items, so on and so forth. So at least keep that in mind. It is gonna take it at least a little bit of while, but that's legitimately the easiest way to set up a sorting system that's in the game right now. And it's powerful because once you decide that you wanna start doing something else, or if you wanna add more to the system, so on and so forth, it's actually pretty easy. Right, so we still have this extra one little knob here. If we wanted to extend it out again into other stuff, we just have to add another splitter, right? And now we got two more outputs that we can use. So we could connect this one to the industrial system, industrial furnace system that we made, right? That'd be, we could do that, right? We could. And now, technically, it would actually drop stuff off. If it picked up anything, it would automatically send it to the furnaces, and then it would deposit it in this box. But we need to actually fix that really quick. If we disconnect the industrial output, put it back here, and then we need to take the end. Oh, yeah, the end. From that furnace way the hell over here. Remember this thing that we did the uh, in the, the videos a while back? Well, now technically all we got to do is reconnect all of this stuff together. But for ease of access, technically all I'd have to do is just connect it into the input over here. On the drop box. So now if it had anything to drop, it would automatically go into there. And then since now there's no box over there connected, it's not going to pick up the random stuff that it shouldn't be picking up. And the auto smelter system would actually work correctly. But as soon as I connected that thing, you notice that it started picking up all the stuff. It's because that guy right there has no filters on it, right? So keep that, keep an eye on these things. But the more that you play around with it, the easier it's going to become for you to actually utilize it. And I think that it'll definitely expand your playability. And like I said, for about 15 minutes worth of work, you're going to be able to do a whole lot more in the game. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you enjoy what we do here. Other than that, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your evening and enjoy yourself some rust. Adios.